Hi everyone, my name is Monica. Thank you for uh, bearing with us and uh, for waiting while we had the technical difficulties. I know it's relatively difficult because you can see them setting up lunch. Um, I hope you'll be able to hang on. I'm a consultant for customer correspondence, which basically means that I spend every day up to my eyeballs in customer correspondence. But uh, it's been my experience that people have a hard time picturing what that exactly means or they think that it's just some form of glorified mail merge. And so I thought that we would just get started uh, by looking at a few examples of some of the things that fall into the category of customer correspondence. So it's not all that much important that you can read what it actually says. It's just supposed to be an example. So we have an electricity bill, um, basically an itemized bill up here. We have some graphics depicting the usage history. We have the customer address, customer number. So basically a document that went out to the customer by mail with uh, certain information that was specific to his case, um, but it could have just as easily have been a PDF attachment, for example. Here we have a text message. Um, not so much personalized data here in this case, uh, but other digital channels are possible. Um, we send the occasional fax. Um, we uh, send messages to customers' TVs, informing them about certain things. We send information to their routers so that the next time they uh, start their internet browser, information can be shown to them. And it's basically a way you can't ignore it. You could just send your email to the, the, the wastebasket, but if you have it open in your browser, that you can basically not the inform ignore the information that the company is trying to show you. Um, here we have just an email example, very plain, basically informing the customer what, on what date their services will be available. We call this a welcome letter, even though it is an email. And um, here I have live chat. This is a specific chat tool, but you could also um, have a Facebook chat or you could also have a support-oriented Twitter, Twitter feed, and all of these things fall into customer correspondence. Now, moving on, uh, I've brought you some facts, and I'm just gonna let uh, that speak for itself. And this one as well. Um, this is a, an example customer journey. I'm not sure how many of you have already done customer journey mapping for your company or for your customers. Um, just very plain, basically over here during awareness and consideration during this phase, the purchase has not yet happened. And basically here is when the customer relationship, as I would call it, actually starts with purchase and delivery, usage and billing, post-sale support, and maybe back here even ending the relationship. Now, um, I realize that there might be some uh, people from marketing in the audience, but I'm going to put up the next slide anyway and hope I don't offend anybody too much. But I'm going to go so far as to say that marketing has the largest impact right here before the customer relationship is even created. Let's say your customer purchases, but then opts out of any marketing information. He doesn't follow you on Twitter. He doesn't visit your Facebook page. You have basically the rest of this very, hopefully very long journey where the customer is basically on their own. Now, um, since I know that uh, Ute and Teresa have a background in technical communication, I'm gonna throw this in there. Technical communication kind of gets in there once the customer relationship has already been formed, down here in the delivery and installation part, and up here in post-sale support. But customer correspondence actually covers this whole part. And this is the whole part that you might actually be missing out on right now. We looked at the examples a few minutes ago and maybe you're having kind of a hard time bringing that into here. And I tried to fit it in, but it ended up being really full. So um, it, for purchase, we could have, for example, a contract. It could be a one-page mobile phone contract. It could be a three-page car rental contract. Or it could be a 300-page contract between B2B partners. 
for delivery and installation. We had that email that was a welcome letter informing the customer, your services will be ready for you to use on such and such date. Usage. Let's say um, you're a telecommunications provider and you realize that internet service is down in one part of the city. You can just send a text message out to everybody and say, hey, we realize that your internet service is down. Um, we're working on it to bring it back up and thereby avoid all of those people in that part of the city calling your support hotline and saying, my internet doesn't work. We saw the electricity bill. Up here, post-sale support or complaint. Uh, let's say the customer calls your call center and says, um, I would like an overview of all of my services. I want you to send all of the bills for the last 24 months in the mail. That's where this happens. And here, upgrade or renew. In those two cases, basically, you would go back here. But let's say the customer does decide to cancel. Do you want to just kick him in the butt because you're mad that he's leaving? You could send him a letter and say, hey, we received your cancellation of your contract, and we're sorry to see you go, but would be really happy if you came back. And, and maybe that will leave the customer with a good feeling because they realize that you're still important to them even though they've decided to leave. Your customers want to hear from you. They don't want to buy your product and then have you drop off the face of the earth. And although maybe we like to push a lot of marketing information at them, there's also information that they actually need to use your product and to use your service correctly. And they need it when they need it. Not when you decide to inform them, but when their internet service is down, you need to let them know by text message, because email is not going to work probably if internet is down, that their service is down. And you need the information to be correct and consistent across all channels. I can't send an email on Monday and have him call the call center on Tuesday and have that person say something completely different. So, I'm using this recycling uh, symbol to s basically represent a CMS um, and trying to basically say that uh, content reuse and uh, centralized authoring, and basically I'm trying to squeeze that all in there. It doesn't really say that, I'm sorry. Um, I wish it were this easy. I wish you could just get a CMS and then have amazingness come out the back. And I work for a CMS vendor, so I really, really wish it were that easy. But it's not. You need basically a content strategy first. You need to know where it is that you're trying to go and make a plan of how you're gonna get there, basically before you decide this step. And only then can you achieve quality and efficiency. Um, I've listed here just some of the factors that um, go basically into the c content strategy for customer correspondence. And I don't really want to go into all of them. Um, but basically, uh, from here on down, that kind of influences how many variants are you going to have on your content. Do you want to send it in the mail? Do you want to send it by email? Do you want each of your 500 products with each of its 300 configurations to be displayed in the letter that goes to the customer? Or are you going to say, one size fits all, I only need one email template basically for every customer? And I have the legacy processes in here because the, the customer correspondence is a little bit different from uh, marketing that there's one team that maybe creates the content and they push it out to the website and the customer consumes it, there is, there's an extra step in there. There's the call center in between that uses the content that was provided for them in the CMS and then maybe edits it if you allow that and then sends it out to the customer. So we have to take into consideration here how are those call center agents or whoever it is that is creating the customer correspondence, how are they used to working with this? Um, because they will be less open to process changes and to, oh, we need structured content. Because for them, it's only, I want to send a letter to the customer. So you have to really take this into consideration. 
What it ends up looking like, though, is this. Marketing has their CMS, and technical communication has their CMS, and customer correspondence ends up having their own. And um, even though maybe some people are going to shake their heads now, I think that is an absolutely realistic and feasible way of doing things. Because each of these areas has certain specialist functions that the other people don't need. Technical communication is going to have a really hard time sending a fax with their CMS. And marketing is probably going to have a hard time populating uh, how-tos to a help app. And we're going to have a hard time creating rich media for a website. It's just that there, all of these systems are, were created with a different outlook in mind, and I don't think that there's one system on the planet that is capable of covering all of these specialist functions. So what can you do? You can basically connect them. And ideally, it would look something like this, that the, the areas in, in your company, and we could add knowledge management, and basically everybody that creates content continue using the systems that they're used to and that can cater to their needs. But in the background, we have a shared content base. And it could be very simple things to start off with that could be in the shared content base. You could have all of your images in here. You could have your product names and product descriptions in there. Um, general terms and conditions, brochures, basically th things that these people don't really want to worry about so much, but just use. And then you can basically achieve what I've called one face to the customer, that if these two people or these three people are speaking about the same product in their conversation with the customer, they're actually calling it the same thing. So, how do we get there? Um, basically, you need a unified content strategy. I realize I'm borrowing from Ann Rockley here, but I just really like the terminology. You need a content strategy that will basically cover all of those areas, cover every department in your organization that actually creates content, so that while we might have those silos and systems, we don't actually have silos in our minds. We're all sitting at the same table, thinking about what is it that we want to communicate to our customer, and using that as the basis for the strategy that will encompass all. And I realize that that's difficult because you have a, maybe you have a global organization, and in this region they do things different than here. So it needs to be a long leash. People still need to be flexible enough to have a social media conversation, basically on eye level with the person that they're talking to, but everybody needs kind of a frame of reference so that they'll know what can I do, what am I allowed to do, what is the direction that we're trying to go into. And only if you have this general frame of reference that everybody adheres to will it be possible to connect those systems and uh, make the reuse of content out of the shared base th that we had over here move from just images to even more parts, actually, of your content. And if you get that, you will reach this, you'll reach a cohesive customer journey where it's not marketing here and technical communication here and customer correspondence here, but from beginning to end, you'll speak to your customer with one voice. And that's all I have for you. Thank you. <laughs>